Hey everybody, welcome to CSS Hacks in the wonderful Elementor page builder for WordPress and today is all about interaction using the hover pseudo class and the free T's which of those properties are transform, translate and transition which I've used in a couple of demonstrations to show you how to perform this particular effect which I'm hoping to release in the near future with a couple of other elements as a template because the code is a little bit more heavy. So today's tutorial to introduce you to these effects is this particular example, which is a very smooth movement of four objects in from different directions. And you can expand upon this in many ways to create subtle effects such as this. But today we're going to focus on recreating this. So let's jump in at the back end and actually see what we've already got set up. And what we have is a nested section. So we've got an outer section and within that column we have pasted several sections to create effectively these four boxes. Now the outer section is going to be our hover area and I'm going to express that as a class of db hyphen window two. The two solely there to separate from some other code I'm working on and to ensure there's no clashes during the tutorial. Now each of these columns are then given their own class to tell us which direction they're going to enter from. So this one's db enter top, this one's db enter right and we carry on with the same syntax to get the left one and to finish up with the db enter bottom. So there we go, that's the syntax we're going to use for each of those four classes. So let's kick off by putting our code in onto the main section like so. And the first thing we need to do is specify what happens when the box is either being hovered on or when it's not being hovered on. So let's start with this lovely double pseudo class statement of db window 2 when it's not being hovered on and the effect that we want to apply or the property is going to be applied actually to the items within so. So the first one we'll start with, let's go with the enter left. So when we're not hovering on, what we're going to do? The, the first of our T's is to transform that position and the second of our T's is to translate its position and the translation requires a horizontal and a vertical position and negative numbers on the horizontal move it left and negative numbers on the vertical move it up. So in the instance, we don't actually need to have the second zero if we're only talking about horizontal movement. We're going to leave it in there for the sake. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify a percentage of movement. So let's start with minus 10%. And what it does is it's going to move it when we're not hovering on the object by 10% of its own containment width. So if we move that to 50%, we see it moves half. And if we go 100%, it moves its entire width distance. But let's get it right off the screen and go with 1,000. So now we have the effect that as we move in and out, the objects moving across the screen. But in order to be able to see that, we need to apply a bit of transition delay. So we do this by again just targeting the left class and their third T is going to be the transition property and we specify what we want to target which would be the transform property so we could just put transform there but let's go with all which covers all of the bases codes a little bit heavier doing that way but just for the tutorials it's simple to focus on that how long do we want to take it the transition to occur three quarters of a second and we're going to use that wonderful ease in out property to make it a smoother movement so now we see it takes three quarters of a second for the object to move back into view now to delay down the particular process of that occurring as we can see at the moment it moves in and out at the same pace is we need to apply a little bit of a delay now you'll notice i put the transition up here on the class and that makes sure it applies in both directions of the hover element in and out whereas if i only applied the transition in here it would only affect it on the outward movement. So we could apply another transition here to make a slightly different delay or different movement but what we're going to do is we're going to apply a transition delay directly within this event. So when it's not being hovered on how long does it take for the transition to occur and let's say it's 1.5 seconds and in doing so what we should see now is once it disappears off the screen it moves in at the three quarter second pace it then waits one and a half seconds before it then moves back out again. So it's a slower removal than the time it took to come in. And we can just increase that delay if we so wish to a greater time. So now it's a simple case of step and repeat. We're literally gonna copy our code. We're gonna target our next class by switching the db enter left to right, and we remove the negative, so now it moves across to the right of the screen. Now, at the moment, there's no transition delay to play to this, so it just disappears. 
And the way we're going to add the transition delay is just by adding it up here with a comma delimiter between them. And we're going to basically add the end to right. And while we're here, we might as well just add the other classes that we named of enter top and enter bottom. So there we go. So we have all our transitions in place. And now it's just a case of us applying the same property mechanisms that we add here into our next two classes. So let's just put the line break in and let's apply our next one. And we're going to say we want it to go top. And if you remember, we need to target the second number for a vertical movement. And we need to add a minus figure to get it to move up. And so now what we should be able to see is that we have the same effect. One and a half seconds, they move and disappear off the screen and back in again. So let's just do the final one, which is where we're going to focus upon the end to bottom. Let's just open up so you can see a little bit clearer. And we're just going to change that to bottom. And we're going to turn that into a positive number. So now in doing so, we should now have our event occurring and the boxes coming in from the four directions. So there you go. That's a simple introduction to the transition, transformation and translation properties in CSS, which allows you to make these wonderful animated objects move in and out the screen upon a hover event. At a later date, I'll be going into a little bit more detail how you can use this, how you can also make sure it's very comfortable to use on iOS. Um, but that will come at a later point. Well, also, I may be discussing some other things that we need to be aware of when working with CSS in Elementor. And in particular, I mentioned in a couple of other videos that once you've sort of got your code down in a section, the best place to probably put it is inside your theme. And I've noticed a few quirky bugs with Elementor that when I've got multiple sections, all with their own CSS applied to it, sometimes they don't render on screen. It seems to render the top stack CSS and then ignore some of the ones below, which is a weird bug. But if you, however, you move the code from here, either into your theme or stick it up into the page settings, custom CSS box, then it eradicates that problem. Okay, so that's all from me today. Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully it's inspired you to learn a little bit more about using CSS with Elementor. And until next time, goodbye.